Welcome to the BuildFire Workshop, where we learn how to build new features on the BuildFire platform. Today we're going to learn about the BuildFire CMS, what we call the data store. Let's dive right in. Before we get started, it's good to stop and take a moment and explain what the CMS is. Now, from now on, I'm going to be calling the CMS uh, the BuildFire Data Store. Now, anything that's saved in the BuildFire Data Store has two modes. The first mode is draft. So basically, as you're typing in uh, on the control side and then hit save, it's saved in draft mode. The only time it gets promoted to live mode and shipped out to all the devices is after you hit the publish button. Now, BuildFire takes care of this all in the background. You don't need to worry about it while you're developing. But it's important to know that the data that's saved in the CMS or the BuildFire data store is meant for configuration data, content data, and things that are naturally uh, selected for a CMS. So now let's take a look at some code we have prepped. Now moving over to the BuildFire SDK, the plugin tester, I just set up a little piece of code here that says some label, some field, and a save button. Um, and the widget side really isn't doing anything just yet. If you haven't set up your environment, now is a good time to see our previous video on how to set up your BuildFire SDK environment. Looking at the control side of this plugin, inside of the content index.html, we see that we're referencing the BuildFire.js file in relative path as always. We have a simple span representing the name, input to, uh, field that's labeled with the ID txt name and a simple placeholder and a save button. On click, we're calling a function called save. Now, obviously in production, you may be using uh, things like React or Angular or any other framework that's out there that's all possible, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple. The save function creates an object that has one property called name, and it takes the value of this input control and puts it in this property afterwards calls buildfire.datastore.save, passes along that object, passes a tag. Think of a tag as the name of the table or collection you want to save information in. And then has a callback with an error and a response. In this case, we're just looking at the error. Uh, error. And we're just going to log it to the console.error. Brings back an error. And all we're going to do is log it to the console. Let's take a look at this in action. If I come in here and type in Daniel and hit save. Now, if we refresh, you can see that it's not automatically loading the previously saved data. And if we take a look at the code, we can see that we're not actually doing that. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that when the page first loads, we type in buildfire.datastore.get and if your data store has a singleton object, it'll just return back the very first object it finds. And all we have to do is pass it along the tag that we saved in. In this case, we, t we said it was foo. And then there's going to be a callback with an error and a response. And what we do here, let's just type in a debugger to see what comes up. So let's open up the inspector and refresh. And you'll notice that the callback got triggered after we called back called buildfire data store.get. And in the results, there's an object. Let's take a look at that. You can see it has a tag, foo, last updated, the ID of the object that we saved. This is auto generated by the system. And then our object is wrapped around inside of a property called data. So all the information that we pass in the CMS is actually in the data property. This is done for several reasons that we'll explain in future episodes. But for now, all we need to know is the data that we sent in on the results back is just in dot data. So let's go ahead and modify our code to make sure that we load the name back into the input field. So over here, all we have to do is inside of the callback, type in if there's a result that came back. That's probably good practice if we do and r.data, if there's something in the data. Take the 
txt name. Now you can also do get uh, document document get element by ID, but for simplicity today, we're just going to do this data dot, and the property that we called it was name name. So now if I say this, come back here, let's close out the console and refresh. You can see that it's saved. Now this basically took our data when we had saved, sent it through a secure API over to our servers, saved it in, in a segmented database in our database server that's replicated and behind a firewall. And we did a get and retrieved that information. Generally, this takes days to set up. With BuildFire, you can do this in minutes. The next part is, well, we understand how we can save data here in our CMS. How do we pull it up on the widget side? So moving over to the widget side, I'm going to come here and trim down all these comments that we don't need. Trim down this reference to a style sheet that we don't need. And basically, note the relative path is slightly different just because there's no nested folder here. What we're going to do is in this span, we're going to delete the internal content, give it an ID called S name since it's a span. We're going to start a script. And in here, all I'm going to do is copy this piece. Now, I'm calling buildfire.datastore.get, just like I did on the control side. I'm calling the tag foo. There's an error in response. I say, if there's a response and it has data, put it in, in this case, s name, and not value since it's a span. We want inner HTML and then just put the name in there. So let's go ahead and save and refresh. Now notice you see Daniel here and Daniel here. The BuildFire platform knows that this widget is associated with this control and so the data pooling and segregation is all done automatically behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about it. Now if I change this to Daniel Hindi, save, still didn't show up here. Well, if I refresh this frame, it does show up. But you'll notice in the BuildFire platform, you see a lot of things update automatically. If we were to do that, let's take a look at how we would do that. All we would need to do is type in buildfire.datastore.onUpdate. Now, onUpdate lets me send a function that will be called as a callback whenever an update is triggered. So in this case, just, just like always, it's a callback. We're going to get a result back. And in this arrow function, I'm going to copy and paste this as is. So basically, this is going to get triggered anytime the control side changes. So I'm going to come here, refresh, and type in Daniel Hindi exclamation point. Notice it updated automatically. The BuildFire platform notices that there was a save to the CMS and automatically sends that over to the widget so it gets any updates. Now, the CMS and the BuildFire data store is shipped automatically to the device itself. So a mini database is, is actually represented within the app on the native device. And this is both for Android and iOS. And that's it for this episode. Hopefully you found this helpful. You can now start saving your configuration information and content information all in the BuildFire data store. In future episodes, we'll talk about the various databases BuildFire offers you, analytics servers, push notification servers, and authentication servers. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with our latest content. If you do so, you'll also be entered into a raffle where you can win some BuildFire merchandise. Thanks for watching.